Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Afghanistan 11. This will be the start of a new series on it because we will now be doing a different campaign mission. And I plan to do this one from start to finish, even if we push beyond the actual release point. Now, I'm not sure about that, but I actually want to point out first of all, before we get into the mission itself, this nice little um, tribute that the game now pays on startup, one of the opening um, messages that they have, like with the logos and all that, is this one, dedicated to the brave service members who fought against terror in Afghanistan. So I think that's a really lovely uh, addition. I don't remember it being there before, so I apologize if it was and I didn't catch it, but um, that's a nice little message. Uh, I think it will, hopefully will be appreciated. Um, I certainly appreciate it, even though I didn't serve, but I, I think it's good to recognize those who did. So, um, in this one, we did the Battle of Lash Kagar last time, and we're going to move on to Operation Mountain Thrust. Now, this was available in the last um, the last release, I guess, or, you know, patch, beta, whatever we want to call these. Uh, and this patch still has a few bugs that they've already mentioned that should be released, obviously. I mean, should be fixed by release date. Um, I think that the ASV, the Armored Scout Vehicle, is broken in this um, version, but... Uh, we'll just avoid using it just in case. So so here we go. On May 17th, 2006, an operation that would result in Afghanistan seeing its bloodiest period since the fall of the Taliban regime was launched. A NATO and Afghan-led effort, the primary objective of Operation Mountain Thrust was to quell the ongoing Taliban insurgency in the south of the country. Instead, by the end of July, the Taliban had captured two districts of the Helmand province. During the months of fighting, close to 150 soldiers from the coalition forces were lost, and 40 Afghan policemen were captured by the Taliban. Heavy aerial um, bombing led to more than 1,100 Taliban members being killed, and 400 were captured. A top UN official in Afghanistan was quick to point out that the number of Taliban casualties do not reflect success. The Taliban fighters' reservoir is practically limitless. The movement will not be overcome by high, high casualty figures. So that's the premise for this mission. Note that this is the uh, the reason why I like this mission is because it's probably the most similar to what will eventually come, which is the uh, random scenario generation. I think a lot of people are looking most forward to that as they did in Vietnam 65. So this is, I think, the closest we'll get to it. There's no real structure to this mission. It's basically just win. And although I think winning in the real game will be uh, determined by a score above 50, for us, it's going to be 55, so it's a little more challenging. And I think that uh, this mission is, in fact, quite challenging. It could drag on at the end. If it does, I might... Well, depending on people's view, I might call it to an early close if it's obvious victories in hand. But my own practice playthrough of this mission was uh, actually quite difficult. I I quit it before, without like getting all the way to turn 60, but it was a really hard fight to swing over, there's at some point you start spiraling out of control to victory, which is nice, but um, it took me a long time, and I, there was a time when I was definitely around 47, 48 hearts and minds, and doing everything I could just to hold my own. So, uh, we need to quell the ongoing insurgency in the Helmand province, and recapture the region, gaining support for the cause with local villagers. Your troops will be stationed at Objective Bravo, but you will need to move into the surrounding areas, and win the hearts and minds of the locals. Very simple objective, basically just play the game and win. <laughs> Nothing like defend a fob or whatever that we had in the Lash Kagar mission. Um, importantly, we want to know who our political liaison is. And hearts and minds on enemy kills is down one. Intel from villages is up, but Taliban missions are up. And political points on enemy kills up 100. So it's very interesting. It looks like the political points would be slightly easier to come by. Very slightly. This is not like a really... He's a very well-balanced liaison, which means that, of course, if we have an election, we'll definitely want to vote for somebody who's more coalition-favored. But uh, until that comes, we'll have to watch Hearts and Minds. I guess in the very, very beginning of the game, I usually don't have a problem with Hearts and Minds. I have a problem with political points. In fact, Hearts and Minds I don't usually have a huge problem with at all. It's really political points, which gears... You know, it's the economy which funds your ability to do stuff. So let's... Uh, Let's see, we have no enemy activity on this mission, uh, on this turn, which is great to see. So I'm sure that'll change very soon. Uh, training time is three turns. That makes sense. The ANA me mechanized, I believe that is the one, which is um, which is not 
currently functioning correctly. And yeah, so let's get into the game then. Probably I didn't need to go here. We started our base, of course. So uh, this is fun because like I said, this is the most, I think the most um, random generation you'll get where you don't actually start with any units. I'm gonna have to get back into the swing of things, my goodness. Uh, so let's first obviously start recruiting some forces. I think an end wrap, oh, let's first actually get a husky for mine, mine sweeping. Then we also are gonna take an end wrap and we need an infantry force as well. Probably it's best just to immediately bite the bullet and get um, a US Special Forces because we have the money to do so. Maybe it's good on the first mission as well to get um, either a Chinook or a Black Hawk. I think that those are both really good options. And then another Infantryman, then we can try to get two areas clear at the same time. Uh -huh. Tell you what, I think the Chinook, I don't know what the movement point cost is per hex um, in terms of political points, not actual action points. So between these two, I would rather choose the cheaper one. I'm suspecting it's the Blackhawk, but I haven't done my research. We are going to want one of each eventually, so we can just figure this out ourselves by getting both. Um, let's also get a... Buffalo, because we will want that eventually. In fact, we'll probably want two of those. I'm really into my budget early, but I feel like it's better to just do this, to bite the bullet and buy all the things you're going to want, and as quickly as possible, expand. This is, you know, it's there are some expansion qualities to this game, right? So um, we can have this person start training, but we don't need them to do that yet. They just need to end their turn here. And since we have the Chinook and the Blackhawk, we can get them mobile. And the first unit I want to move out is obviously my Husky. I know that I'm going to move this way. Is this a road here? Let's actually open my Buffalo. No, no, no. Yeah, Buffalo, yeah. Uh, so the road is here. Okay, so this is the last part of the road. So I only need to check for mines up to here. Two hexes away, we'll clear this one. And then there's no one there. So let's get our Husky back. He'll need to clear here. Okay, nothing there. And notice that each one of these, it looks like it only takes three for him to do anything. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, perfect. So we'll just have him make it his way all the way over there. We know that there's no Taliban on the uh, out on the map right now. So, gosh, we have maybe the possibility of clearing a couple of places. Let's get a buffalo to build a road here gonna facilitate us actually I probably should have built that road first that would have saved the buffalo a little bit of travel time okay now I actually oh he doesn't have any movement points remaining I was gonna want him to because we ha actually have to build a bridge before we get across here so maybe they can tag team can they how do I build oh here's a bridge so I can build a bridge this turn that would be fantastic I think right here makes the most sense. Actually, I can't even build it here because this MRAP's in the way. So if I build it, I'm actually curious. I think I'm going to use my helicopter on this one, believe it or not, because I don't know what building a bridge here will do. I, don't, I thought you could only build it across straight areas, but it's saying that technically this is a viable location for a bridge. We might just experiment with that ourselves. If this unit next turn can build a bridge there, I will. Uh, I'll probably do that because then... Actually, it doesn't make sense. Then the road would still... I don't know if I like that, in fact, because... Yeah. Oh, by the way, WASD is working now, which is very nice that they, they have um, slightly more um, hotkeys available. Spacebar, I'm sure, is still on turn. So, well, I'll, we'll kind of have to figure out the various um, new changes together since I didn't do my due diligence and play this ahead of time. I think it makes the most sense to build the road here. And then to build it, well, this guy's actually in exactly the wrong position. Weird, why did he build it up that way? It's kind of strange. 
and he can only make it over here. Okay, fine. So our MRAP is going to have a hard time getting where it needs to go this time, this turn. We'll still do it. We'll load up Alpha. We're definitely going to want another infantry then. And let's get Alpha in, and let's move out. So we're going to unload them basically as far as we can in. It looks like they can do this, so we can get there directly, which is nice. Hearts and minds, spells, hearts and minds. All right, we don't have to worry about um, sweeping because I don't think any missions have come and actually done any like operations against us. So we'll load them back up. And I guess we we'll, won't get very far, but we can move a little bit further down the road. Okay, good. So maybe next turn we can get over to there. Who knows? I don't. So I don't know. I don't really understand. Does this count as a roadway? Because it looks like the road goes like this, and this road, kind of weird. I guess it goes in there, and I guess this goes in here. Okay, well that's good. So we can get out this way if we want to go east. We can get out this way if we want to go southwest. Very good. Um, we still have some points that I want to save for building water towers. But let's go ahead and use our Blackhawk, which I suspect has the slightly more efficient movement. And let's drop this unit. Sure, why not? Why not right in the town? Okay, they're uncooperative. Then just go ahead and pick them right back up. Copy solid. We'll probably ferry these guys over. Okay, let's see what the movement cost is for one of these. Let's go two just so I can make sure. So eight. It's four movement per, so this should be twelve. Good. Okay, there it is. A little animation. Um, let's now pick up this same troop with the Schnook. And move him. Drop him off actually over here. In the town, why not? Roger. And now we're gonna have visited three towns, which is fantastic, in the opening turn. Okay, and then I also need to see how much this cost. 15. Are we going to be able to get back? I think so. Oof, just barely. So let me... Okay, it should be the same if we go this way or this way. So let's do this. Let's go down this way. Uh, I guess he went up that way, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so one, two, let's just do our two. Ten. So this is more expensive than the Black Hawk. That's good to know. We'll use the Black Hawk in the future. I mean, that's what we expected, right? Okay, very good. That is probably going to complete our turn. We're off to a good start, I'd say. Uh, we'll probably want another Husky eventually, but let's end the turn. So why the spacebar is not working anymore? Probably I have to set up my um, action point, my hotkeys. All right, intelligence. There are two militia and one Taliban now out there. And Taliban should enter from the east of the map since none of these should be, as of yet, Taliban controlled. Okay, so let's have you build a bridge. You can build a bridge here. I think we're not going to do that. Although the reason why I wanted to do that is because then it would allow us to to get across over here. Um, let's still build it here. I think that makes the most sense and probably build a road and uh, a water tower there we only need two movement points for a water tower and we might as well get it up ASAP the other thing we could do is just build the water tower directly right here it's tough to say what's the best thing to do let's just build the water tower Okay, if we do build it here, the road works through the village itself as well. That counts as a road. That's nice to know. Uh, you know what? I'd say let's just build it right here. No reason not to. Okay, and with the two points, it looks like we'll be able to get back to base even, which is better, so we can refuel. Water, water's uh, done. Now, uh, similarly, let's move this guy along the road. Now, there's two militia, but where would they spawn from? The hills, right? So would they have gotten far enough down? Well, let's do our leapfrog thing. Can we... I don't... Did I, I? Can I establish convoys yet? I don't think so. I don't... I don't think so. Damn it, I, of course, forgot to actually recruit a unit last turn. Oh, why can't we not recruit... 
Oh, we can't recruit. Okay, well, let's recruit the howitzer then. So I think that makes sense to do. Um, yeah, all right. So we'll do our leapfrog game. One, two, three. One, two, three. Just goes up here. Um, unfortunately, we're going to have to deal with... Looks <laughs> like the leaf blower people come, of course. So I'm going to put this uh, cut in here, and we'll be back in a moment. Okay, welcome back. Sorry, it looks like the map moved right as I opened it. But here we go. So... <laughs> Kind of lost my train of thought, unfortunately, with that delay, which only was a second for you, but was more than an hour for me. Let's see, is this a new turn? It is. Turn two, and we have our guy loaded up. We probably want to get him all the way over here. So we already sent our... Um, we did not send our husky as far as he can go, so... What was the movement on these guys? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two... That didn't make sense. Oh, is it one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. Yep, that's it. So one, two, three, one, two, three. We'll get him over here. That's quite loud. And we'll do our alternating bounding thing until the convoy thing is set up. I don't think it's set up yet. One, two, three, one, two, three. That's as far as he can go or what? No, he can go one more. Yeah, because he has three points remaining. So one, two, three, one, two, three. We're also going Mike. Nice, very nice. We have detected and eliminated an IED, which is fantastic. We'll do our alternating bounding again. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. Well, he's actually going to have to go here. So I'm going to short him one, which is fine because we can go off road here, I think. Or is it important? Maybe it's just. Okay, you know what? I think I'm going to do is just have him go. Oh, very nice. That was another IED detected, disposed of. And I think that's going to clear us all the way to our target, which is going to be, I think, right here. If we wait one, so this is one less movement point we have to do, and then we can offload him here. It doesn't seem to make a difference whether we go off-road here or here. But let's, hmm, this is a really good question. Um, th th why does it matter? Probably it doesn't. It looks like, okay, if we go off-road here, it should be, we'll be here and here. Okay, so it doesn't matter. We'll go all the way over here then, just because it'll maximize our... These have a 60% mine resistance, so that's a good thing, um, which means that, yeah, should be in better shape um, if we're running into a mine with that. Obviously, the best case scenario is if you can get it with your Husky, but the MRAPs are really, I mean, that's what they're designed for, right? MRAP, mine resistant, ambush protected, something like that. Um, okay, so what do we need to do? None of the fires are going for these villages. We almost could... Did we lose the road here? No, it's still there, right? Yeah, it's still there. Okay, good. We almost could make it over to this with the Black Hawk. I was just thinking, what if we take our Black Hawk with Charlie and send them over? Let's first see, can our Chinook actually make it all the way there in one turn? I, I oh my gosh, it can. Okay, well, this is obviously not, this is a one-way trip this turn, but I think that that's useful to do. And maybe we should already get a supply truck. No, okay, so uh, let's do this road here first. Um, we want to connect that, that's good for hearts and minds. We also want to make sure that we have enough points, which we do. Do we have, I think you can build um, a water works even if it puts you into the negative. And I think we will do that. And we'll, why not build it right next to the road? There's nothing else we need to build for this village and that'll keep help us keep better eyes on it. So this will bring us into the negative, which is going to mean what? What do we need to do before before building that, which will put us into the negative, but these things will also pay us dividends. Uh, we got this one this turn, so we won't get dividends this turn, but next turn we should have a very small gain, but is there anything else we need to do? You can do movement. Movement is fine with the political points situation, even if it's negative, but buying new things is not, so if we want to buy anything, now's the time to do it. I kind of want to get another special forces group. I think that those are absolutely fantastic with their vision range of the radius of four for moving around the map. But getting the hearts and minds, I mean, that's awesome. So basically what we'll have in this situation, okay, I know what I want to do. 
I'm gonna buy a supply truck. Whoops, buy a supply truck. These are very cheap. Confirm. Um, because I'm gonna send this MRAP pretty far away. He's going long distance. I'll probably try to get him all the way over to here to secure hearts and minds of that village. And then his return trip, there's just no way that he's gonna make it on fuel. Um, we'll either send the Chinook to refuel him. I think Chinooks can. They can. Um, otherwise, we'll send the supply truck, which is just the really cheap version of um, the Chinook. I mean, it can't go, it doesn't fly, but it does all the same things the Chinook does otherwise. And if we can get over here by air, we it does prevent us from needing to go all this way. Obviously, what we're going to need to do eventually is set up um, a couple of forward operating bases. I suspect one down here and then probably one right here. That's what I think. I don't know if I've really shown you the map. We can look at it. So basically, we can do the organization this way. We have our one, two, three, four. Sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten villages in this one, so it's a big map. Very big. It's, it's kind of overwhelming, it's so big. <laughs> but uh, we have ten villages, and if we put one forward operating base to cover here, it can cover these two. One right here will cover probably these three. And you know what? We might even just say to hell with these two. They're so far off the main service road that it seems almost impossible or maybe not impossible but impractical to, to actually save these two got to cut you know maybe at the end of the game if we're doing really well when it already doesn't matter we can try to go liberate them but before that I think we are just going to focus on the ones near the MSR and obviously we're since we're on the ASR this this is probably the secondary main road <laughs> but um, this um, auxiliary service road is Obviously, we need to keep this well patrolled because that's that's where our base is. So, <laughs> uh, okay, so one right there, one right there. We might even get this one set up quickly. How much does it cost to do a fob? Maybe that's what I could uh, try to do instead. How much do you cost to do a fob? Pop supply. I can't remember how much it is to set up. Oh, it's 2,500. We already don't have enough money for it. So we will wait until the water towers start helping us. And we'll try to get water towers going on this one. Did we? It was this turn that we moved the buffalo, right? Yeah, it's at 4 to 5 fuel and 0 to 5 mo movement. So we could if we want to get another buffalo. I don't think that's necessary. Although, you know what? One thing I will want to get before is another husky. I really like having these con patrolling. So we got another husky. We have uh, one supply truck. It's probably better just to get a second one, just to be safe. Because after this, we're not going to be able to build anything more. So we have not, we do have enough for special forces, but I think we're going to have to make do with one. Because we can't do any airstrikes or anything, but I think this is important. I really think it's important to get this waterworks down. Let's go ahead and do that. That puts us into the negative. So now we're just going to have to be careful from here on in. And his job is done. Actually, we're going to want him to build a road, and he has four fuel remaining, plenty. Of, so let's get him over there so we can connect that with a road. That improves hearts and minds as well. So I think that that is all we need to do this turn. Um, do we have some? Who hasn't been given orders yet? The supply truck, that's fine. Oh, we actually can do UN aid, which also helps these places. Why not? It's not going to take very long to do. Very good. And uh, he can't do anything else. But we have another supply truck. We might as well get them to do something. So we'll do UN aid for this one as well. Which is going to make them very friendly towards us. And it's good to have the ones closest to us friendly. Why not? Right? And this one can actually go almost all the way back. We'll get him... Oh, shoot. He can almost make it. <laughs> it's a shame that he can't make it. Copy solid. I just thought of another thing we can do with our schnook, although it's going to take uh, it's going to take movement points to do it. I probably would prefer to do um, it with supply trucks, is have them refuel our um, MRAPs and such. So, um, too bad he couldn't make it, but anybody else we need to move? The Husky. Oh, yeah, the new one. We'll leave him here for now because there's no mines in the places we want to look. Oh, yeah, do we want to do the big journey with the Chinook to get that fire put out? Um, the two options are do that or still we could send the MRAP over. He will get there next turn. Otherwise, 
This can take just two turns for him to get all the way over there. I think I'm going to chance it. The problem is, if if we chance it, no, probably we'll just send him off-road this way, and I'll save the money. The reason why is, if we hit a mine with the MRAP, it won't cause damage to the MRAP, likely. I mean, it's actually not that great of a percentage, only 60% resistance. I think it should be a little bit higher, but that's probably done for game balancing reasons. Considering it's a mine uh, resistant ambush protected vehicle, then uh, you'd expect it to be mine resistant, IED resistant, right? <laughs> anyway, um, if you hit a mine and it doesn't do damage, I think it still blows up the road. And then all these things which are currently connected to the MSR would all be disconnected. So let's not chance it and we'll save a little political points by not sending our Schnook out with um, with the infantry. So we'll end the turn here. I think there's nothing else we need to do. Okay, kind of annoying. You have to wait for those animations. Uh, Charlie Company and Schnuck. Okay, so uh, end the turn, Kern. End the current turn. Okay, no eyes on anything there. What's our intelligence say? Ooh, four and two. Not good, not good. More things coming and They're going to be able to get to the eastern city stuff before we do. That's just clear. So, you are three out of five, so you're doing okay. One, two, three, one, two, three. Well, we will move you here, but let's get this guy to unload the troops right here. Copy solid. And get these guys to visit this town, prove hearts and minds, move back, load them up. And I think we're better off actually moving just back towards the road this way. Although we will avoid, let's see. Let's see, if we wanted to go this way, we can get to two right here. I'll just put my finger on it <laughs> in real life. If we went this way, yeah, it wants us to go. So it would be one, two, three back. And then you only move three at a time. So yeah, clearly this is the fastest way. So... We'll go this way. Oh, that's only if we want to go back. Maybe we just want to head back and refuel. Maybe. This would avoid some hassle, but oh, I think we'll just head back. Let's play it very conservative until our political point situation improves. Note that now, good logistics. So reinforcements cost us a lot last turn. Infrastructure cost us a lot to build, but now the infrastructure per turn should start um, improving. That means that this MRAP, I guess you're just gonna head I mean, not MRAP, this is a Husky. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. Two, three. Wow, you can go a lot further than I expected. Oh, they improved his points from three to five. I see. Well, this is probably makes sense to do. Affirmative. As long as he doesn't get caught by militia. Got another one. Good, so we'll send him back next turn. He'll have the MRAP for support. That's good to know. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and build a road. I think it makes sense to build the road like this, and then also from here up, but we'll probably connect it, like, we'll go up, up, and then, yeah, we'll do the same thing, like, connect it sideways here, or I don't know, I think it makes the most sense to do it up like this and then diagonal in, because that means it's faster to head back. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, good. You can make it all the way here. That's good. Oh, boy. We found the militia. <sighs> well, it's risky, but I think we should still go with it because we want this connected. And... Wait, why did you stop? Build the road. Oh, we don't have the... Son of a gun, I forgot. We don't have the political points to do it, so you actually can't, you can't do it. Hopefully he doesn't get hit on the way home. But we do have the political points to basically do nothing else, huh? Well, we can get the husky to patrol the roads. I don't think it's necessary. One, two, three. Affirmative. Probably we would have seen it if there was anything nearby, but one, two, th one, two, three. One, two, three. We're Oscar Mike. I'm sure that there's nothing, but it doesn't really cost that much We're in terms Oscar of Mike. action points. Uh, and in terms of political points, let's get him home. And he'll get home next turn. You can get home this turn as well. We're 
So we'll just conserve a little bit while our water works start working for us. And we'll have to wait for the... I f totally forgot it. We need political points to do it. You know, this is one of the things. You don't play for a while and you run into these issues. If the good news is, unfortunately, the bad... Uh, the good news is we cleared some IEDs. Two. No, one. But the bad news is we probably took political point damage. 500, I think, it is to repair this. So that's, that's not good. Now, plenty of stuff that hasn't moved, but you know what? We'll just end the turn. Okay. Three, we're back positive. Woo! So 400 infrastructure, that should go up to 300 apiece, so 600 next turn. Logistics wasn't very much. Conflict, I guess the total was positive. ID was more positive than the damage we took, which is good to know. Um, what's the situation this turn? Three and two. Okay, so there's still, everyone else is still out there. Let's get this guy back into repair. We have an extra one anyway, so it's not a big deal. Anybody with smoke? No, nope, not yet. And, huh, 155. I wonder why it's negative suddenly. I didn't see it, obviously, correctly when the turn began. I'm sure it was that way to begin with. So we'll begin the long journey home with this guy. Again, I think it's better to move him when... Uh, let's, let's do this piecemeal. Roger. Okay. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So we'll do this. Okay, then we'll get this guy to move one, two, three. Roger. And we'll start alternating bounding until convoys are set up. We can do it this way. Affirmative. And that's as far as we can go. Cleared it. Good news. Glad we did it this way. One, two, three. Now, I don't think it's worthwhile to risk our MRAP. By the way, I wonder why there's so many militia about. There's obviously some kind of militia planting mines near this road. Otherwise, they wouldn't be here. Uh, but they, once they complete their objective, I thought that they dispersed. Maybe things have changed or are different than I expected. Nonetheless, this is really good news because we are back positive. It doesn't mean we'll build the road this turn because I guess it probably takes too much. What is it? 50 per. So we could build the first road. Maybe is it worth doing? Oh, we won't have enough movement points yet. So maybe actually that means that we should still move over there so that we're ready to build the road on the next turn. Or really, probably we should move as close to the MRAP as we can so to minimize the chance we get hit. Maybe that's what we need to do. Um, hmm, interesting. I don't know what the best thing is to do. I think we will move them out. This is probably going to put us back into the negative. I don't know how much this costs per movement, but let's see, we're at 58. It'll tell us what it is in a moment. Oh, okay, still positive. Now, there's plenty of stuff that still hasn't moved. Obviously, we have a lot of units in here that aren't doing anything, but we don't need them to do anything. I'm pretty sure there's no mines over here. And we move this way, so there's obviously no mines there. Our two water structures are intact. But the next thing we need is basically secure this, build a road, water tower, and then um, we'll slowly expand that way. I think that that makes sense. Maybe this isn't. So we're down to 49, which means that these villages are probably getting turned against us. But logistics wise, ooh, that's not good. That's only 400 still. Did they? Interesting. That is not good news. <laughs> so these guys are both about to run out. It looks like we'll get this guy to move first. One, two, three. Alternating bounding. Oh, look at that. Another mine that's perfect. I'm glad we had him move first. Okay, this guy needs to start building his road, I think. So we'll do this. Copy that. And do you have enough movement point? You do, you can connect. Alright, great news. Not enough movement points yet to... Oh, and actually this one has the fire burning. Fire burning, fire burning. Okay, so we can actually dispatch all our troops out. Um, that's fantastic because it looks like we're losing <laughs> the hearts and minds battlefront, but once we get our economy set up, I'm not as worried. So this guy, one, two, three, Roger. should be fine. One, two, three, one, two, three. We're Oscar Mike. I didn't check to see what our intelligence is going this time. Two and three. Oh, right. Three Taliban. So another militia completed its mission. I can't, I don't know where these mines are coming from. I don't think a militia could have snuck in there, but maybe they did. So one, two, three. 
I mean, could they have snuck even like right here? One, two, three. And you know what? I'm kind of silly. We we have a unit here, which should probably be unloaded and do this work for us. Copy solid. Village uncooperative. uncooperative still. That's quite unfortunate. Um, you know what? We might just try to have this guy. Uh, he's just barely not going to make it, so it doesn't matter. You know what? We'll load him back up. We'll have our supply trucks deliver fuel. Let's actually get our Husky to operate first this time. So let's just uh, try to clear everything. One, two, three, one, two, three. We only need to go here though. Yeah, let's do this. Nothing. And then I will keep this guy out this turn just so he can clear as much space as possible. Okay, good. That means it was clear for him to move, which is good. Now that means that my supply trucks can go. Bring fuel. Deliver fuel to this guy, and then your turn is done. And you can even get home. That's fantastic. We also probably need to, we don't have to refuel them this turn. Once they're red, that means that that's the actual time that you have to do something. So if we send that other husky back out, we could supply him this turn. Okay, three moment. So we can supply him now. And then he can head back out to clear more mines down the road that way. This guy is not going to be able to get back, but that's okay. We have one supply truck available next turn already. And he can also move back this way, which is good. He'll defend the husky, which is good. Very good. Okay, I don't know, by the way, if this troop in here is doing okay. Uh, supposedly he's not. <laughs> he probably needs uh, some rations. That may be what I need to do next turn because it's do they stay supplied? I, I think I know that it wouldn't be it's not perfectly realistic or maybe you can abstract the MRAPs to have a lot of rations in them. But I think it makes sense not to have the troops in the MRAPs uh, using supply or using their rations. Otherwise, if they do, we need some kind of indication about what their supply status is at because, you know, you waste two action points to load and then unload. I don't think that that's fair to tax the player just, you know, obviously we, we have the ability, if we are really paying attention to to, uh, to monitor that ourselves, to like keep mental notes, but that seems a little bit grueling <laughs> to, to do for the player. So let's try to minimize how much we have to use our Black Hawk, but I actually don't see a way, we don't have two MRAPs and we can't afford one. So we'll probably go back into the negative, just ferrying this troop around Let's see, I think it took a Chinook to get up there. So we'll use the Blackhawk for the one over here. Okay, so load him up. Um, we can now, I think, move him here and then unload him. Yeah, that's perfect. And we, we'll do all the movement with the Blackhawk because we'll try to minimize some of the movement with the Chinook. Ah, very good. We're finally getting some intel from these places. I think the more... Okay, another issue. I think it would be nice if the camera auto panned back after locating something. Because um, obviously I probably want to continue movement. So we'll pick this up. They're finally being more cooperative. And I think that's partly because the more they favor you in terms of hearts and minds, the more they're willing to um, give you more information. So we probably didn't need the Chinook for this. I probably could have actually used the... Now that I think about the Blackhawk, could easily have reached there. But we already... Made our bed, now we have to lie in it. So, drop him off. And we will probably dispatch him one away, because I think he can move in and move back. So we'll do that. And good to see the Chinook following the road line. I don't think that's something that they programmed in, but that's the way I would have wanted it. Okay, good. Get in there. Oh, well, this is fantastic. I think we just have enough. Oh, it takes 200. This is perfect. Let's kill him. 77%. That is the harsh reality, of course. It is an attack on the Taliban. Or, the, well, this is just the militia, but they are friendly towards the Taliban, so it's worthwhile. To... Now we still... You know, the one thing I haven't used yet is my drone reconnaissance, and I think that that's a mistake. I think it costs... 
some fair amount of money, and I don't need it this turn because I basically already acted this turn, but we'll probably get that up and running next turn, especially because we have, uh, I mean, I could actually leave this unit out here for a while. I don't need to return with them, but at the same time, there's no reason for them to stay out here. Yeah, what I might do next turn is, or maybe even I should still do it this turn, is something like this, which gives me good uh, gives me a good view over this area, which is obviously a lot less controlled. If I did something like this, we'd get all the way around the town, but we'd also cover a lot of the road. I like to see on the bottom of the road, because that way I can see it, which way the militia approach from to, to drop mines or whatever. So something like this might be useful. And I will have my special, for I will train up extra special forces if, it, if we have the opportunity. Um, and then I can deploy them to unleash an airstrike. Or I can also just get my regular infantry to attack them. Lots of options. But it... We already used our airstrike this turn. We probably... We have a Chinook, yeah, we, we'll do it next turn. So let's bring this guy back. Get him to load up. Copy that. And bring him back. Have him move this way and back home. Moving out. All right, really good. So I think that's all we need to do for this turn. Notice that we are moving a lot faster in this uh, series than we were in the last one. But that is a good 40 minutes in our in our episode. So I'll wrap this episode up here. We'll come back to end the turn and start turn six. If we do five turns an episode, I'll be you know, maybe we can even squeeze in a few more than that, but I'll be pretty happy. It's a lot better than the last time, where it was basically five turns the entire thing. So, um, this is the first episode for the series, so if you wouldn't mind pressing the like button, I would greatly appreciate that, just to improve visibility. And other than that, thanks for watching. I'll catch you for episode two, and until then, take care.